Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Speaking on Pat and speaking with Pat, you 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 really inspired my concept for tonight or my my thought and what I want to discuss tonight. Um, making yourself special. first. You feel me? Just making yourself first. I just want to open a discussion on this topic, the importance of it, and the side effects of you choosing to put you first, and like the repercussions to others, like how others be feeling about your choice now to put you first. You feel me? Like me myself, I feel it's very important to put your happiness first. Because in essence, I don't feel like you can do anything for anybody else if you can't do it for yourself first. You can, how can you truly make somebody else happy if you not happy? Mm -hmm. So making yourself happy got to be a prime priority for people these days. Um, I feel like a lot of times when you choose to make that choice, some people are happy for you, but you got those other people who are so used to you making them happy that they're not that mad that you want to put you first, you feel me? And at times we see those people as people who are closer than we think they're close to us until we step out and choose us first. What y'all think? Oh, man. I felt all of that because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going through that. I'm literally going through that. For the first time in my 38 years of my life, I'm truthfully choosing myself. Right. It's one of the hardest things that I probably actually, it, ironically, is one of the hardest things I probably have had a hard time to realize, not to just do, but to realize or whatever that, hey, you, you're not really that happy. Matter of fact, you're not happy at all. You're just content at where you're at, but you're not happy. And comfortable. everybody else, yeah, you're just comfortable to deal with the shit that you're dealing with. But you haven't reached happiness yet. You, you, when, when you're in a mindset like that, like especially like me, you would you how to say you substitute your own self happiness. By thinking that if I make other people happy, it'll make me happy. Right. Or whatever. And sometimes that's just not the case. And then sometimes, man, when you when you go for it, self-preservation is key. Another lesson I need to learn. Self-preservation is key. It's just like what Faith said, man. If you if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of nobody else. And happiness is part of taking care of your mental health, pretty Big much. Big fact. It's, it's one of those things that I had to actually learn because, you know, our generation or whatever, in the generation before, is like happy. You know what I'm saying? You know, we all had our old, uh, like, old grand relatives old grandpas and stuff like that they always look mad and angry and stuff like that and we thought Mm -hmm. that's that's how a man's supposed to be Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know who gives a fuck about happiness you know what i'm saying like we thought that was the way that's how you are as a man like put my happiness to the side to make everybody happy to me and that that uh will make me a man or whatever but then you think it to yourself, like, just like I said about the children, we didn't ask to be here. <laughs> we didn't ask to be here. I really didn't. I would have probably picked my planet accordingly or playing a reality accordingly. Probably wouldn't pick the one where people that looked at me were enslaved for like half a millennium. Um, so <laughs> in general, um, that part. So like it makes no sense if you're not get if you're not being happy yourself. It makes no sense of trying to make somebody else's happy because in a sense you don't know how. You you don't know how to be happy. 
You don't know how to make anybody else happy because you don't know yourself how to be happy. You're just guessing. You're just doing little things and be like, okay. And a lot of times when you're into that, when you do that, you try to go try to make everybody else happy. They become entitled. They get too used to it or whatever. You spoil them. It, 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 yeah, you spoil them. They get they get too used to it. They it, it almost becomes now you doing what I say is a right of me being around you or whatever. And that shouldn't be the case or whatever. It's it should be you're lucky I'm being nice. Because I don't have to be. Okay. Especially with the job I uh, I am currently getting away from right now. I get paid a certain amount to be nice to people. <clears throat> After that, I don't get paid to be nice no more. <laughs> There's nobody paying me once I clock out to be nice. To so if I go out the way and I'm being nice, I'm spending my gas money to get to you, to do whatever, and this, that, the third. And you're just taking that as you're supposed to do this. I'm going to I'll put that on my checklist once I get to that realization that, um, yeah, I need to be happy myself right. or whatever. Call this an open letter to people that might actually hear this. But, yeah, I did get mixed reactions when I said I'm moving or whatever. There's some people that's just sad that I'm saying I'm go. And there's some people that's like. Oh, so you're going to just leave? Wow. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or, oh, I see you could do this and this and this for this person. Um, but you can't do this and this for me. First of all, I do all of that for you or whatever. I may do it in my way, but I do all of that for you. And second of all, when I do this, this and this for this person, <clears throat> things have come out of it tenfold, even more than that. And this person is from a whole different area. It's from a whole different land that I've never even seen before. <clears throat> Got a whole different life that I ain't never really experienced before. And, yeah, and, and y'all know me but more. Like this person only know me for about six and a half, half six and a half years and has done more for me this year. Then some of y'all have known me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, sometimes you just got to ignore it. It's like I said before, I'm, I'm on this train to get where I'm going. Everybody has a ticket. Either you want to get off on whatever stop you're going to be at, and I want to keep going, or you're going to ride this train with me. Pause, because I feel like there's a pause moment in that <laughs> some type of way. <laughs> but I don't know where and i don't want to know where <clears throat> i'll just cover your bases for you buddy yeah 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 let me get my pause lawyer oh, on hand yeah. oh man take your paws off of that buddy uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't put the paws on it i i would definitely uh ditto you know pretty much and, and parrot a lot of what you and face said for sure um i think you're definitely going to get backlash when you start putting you first. Um, and I think, uh, well, I'm going to just answer the question based off of what I see on the thing because that's how I got my thoughts aligned. And now and now, if I don't, I feel like I'm going to ramble and end up somewhere talking about the come sale or something. You know, I, I, <laughs> all right, so uh, basically, like, I feel like the importance of it is what Pat said. Like, if you are constantly putting others before yourself, then yourself gets worn down with nothing to replenish it. Like, usually, if you're a person that doesn't put yourself first ever, like, usually those are the people in the world that get used. They're usually the people that get taken advantage of. People like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? So, like, I think what happens is, when you do it and you actually start doing that to make to better your mental health, like those people are usually like candidates for depression and other stuff like that because they're constantly being drained. They're constantly having their energies taken and their resources taken, but nothing's coming back. It's just going. 
You know what I mean? And I don't care what it is. If it's a car, you run all the oil and gas out, that shit gonna break down. If it's your bank account, you take all the money out, that shit gonna overdraw. Like, whatever it is, that shit, everything got a limit to how far it can go before it either crashes or something is done. Um, so, so the importance of it is like to keep yourself well. Like, just to keep yourself well, you have to take care of yourself. Like, self-care is a real thing. You have to like, go get your mental health checked out, go get your physical health checked out, work out, eat right, uh, do things that make you genuinely happy to like fulfill you on the inside, like have your hobbies and your activities and your hustles and your businesses or whatever it is that like this, this drives me, this fills my, my life force. This makes me feel like me. You know what I mean? You got to do those things. But the problem is, uh, as I'm looking at the question, like the side effects of it and, and what, what you were kind of alluding to with the people that's like, oh, well, why are you leaving? Like, mm-hmm. that's when you start to see who were your friends and who were just people that were around who had a stake in you, if that makes sense. Like, so mm-hmm. to me, the way I look at a friendship, right? Like friendship and most relationships should be about like, you are in that person's life because you want to see them win, not because of what they're doing for you. And if both people are looking at it like that, then both people get some out of it because I'm getting supported and you getting supported because both of our intentions are not looking back to like take from each other. We're looking to give, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like when you have people that are like all of a sudden see that stake or that claim that they thought they had in whatever it is in your resources, in your life force, in your, oh, I don't have that shoulder to crown no more. I don't have that person that can let me loan five dollars. Oh, he ain't going to take me to where I need to go no more. Or he ain't going to show up whenever I I got a problem going on and be the first one to like when they realize that claim is going for them. They never had a friend in the first place. They had a a commodity. It's kind of like when your when your car break down, mm-hmm. they're not looking at it from a standpoint of oh, my friend is doing something to get better. No, a resource is being taken, and that's what that hate and that resentment, mm-hmm. and that jealousy, and that oh well, how dare you do this and do this to better yourself? And they want to try to make you feel bad for being great, because instead of them looking at it as a win for you, they look at it as a loss for them. Mm-hmm. When in the first place, like, it's kind of good because you didn't see who your real friends are. Because, again, to me, a real friend, like, they ain't looking. If anything, well, how can I help you do this thing that's about to make you better? That's about to make you healthier. That's about to make you <laughs> thrive in some way. You know what I mean? So, like, you kind of get to cut the grass at that point and see, like, where them snakes was hiding at the whole time that might have been in plain sight. But, oh, that looked like a weed. Oh, no, that was a motherfucker about to bite me. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like, I think uh, it can be scary because of that too because inevitably you know like what they say without struggle there's no progress that that lends to everything in the universe like if you're going to generate energy you're going to lose something is going to lose some, some atoms you feel me something is going to lose some particles if you're going to make a molecule one, one atom or another is giving some electrons away you feel me? It's making something, but something has mm-hmm. to go. So it's like that goes to even your life. Give or take. Every if you look at every step of your life, the friends you had in elementary school, if you had real friends in elementary school, they were probably still your friends in middle school. Mm-hmm. If you had real friends in middle school, then they were probably your friends in high school. If you had real friends in high school, they're probably your friends in college. If you had real friends in college, they're probably your friends right now. Because like yep. real friends kind of travel along from wherever you met them because they were there for the right reason in the first place. They never had nothing <clears> that came from you. They were just there to ride along with you. And if anything, hey man, if you do start to fall, I got you. There you go. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's a blessing in it for you because you get to see the great people, but it can also be like a almost a period of grieving. Because you're mm-hmm. losing people along the way that they might not have had the feelings for you, but you might have really cared about them. You might have really fought with them. That might have really, that might have been your motherfucking homie. But to you, but to him, you was just uh, 
something that they I, oh I can I can get use him for this or I can get this or he knows all the girls so I can hang around him for this or he got the money or I can hang around him for this or he got a car and I don't or, or he know this or he got this connection <clears throat> like as as opposed to like no I genuinely just fuck with this nigga like parasite ass niggas like we can sit around and spit a pack of noodles and and just just chill and shit and that's still my nigga. So like the cereal and be cool, shit. It like like when I look at it, like I've always, like I, I've kind of moved around a lot throughout my life, like from school to school or whatever. So like for me, like I've always noticed, like the people that were really fucking with me, I kind of still had the same type of relationship with them later on, and like so like I got a homeboy named Allen. Me and him was real tight, and from like kindergarten all the way through elementary school. I went to a different middle school, went to a different high school, but then we ended up back at the same college. It was still cool with him. Had, like, it, it was, you know what I mean? Cause it was never- like no nothing changed. Yeah, cause that was my homie homie. It won't like, we was, oh, he was using me to play my video game. I was using him so I could have a house. Like, it was like, no, we just cool. You get to middle school. Face was my real friend. Like he's literally traveled with me every step of the way. Cause it was never no like, take it was just oh i just really like your personality you my nigga hey let's keep this shit going mm-hmm. same thing in college like <laughs> like i look at high school like literally the only friend that transferred with me past um high school and lasted w- was fake <laughs> but then i get to college i then pick up you to it jewels you know what i'm saying cherry pick up a whole lot of people but the only ones that stick and are still here today are in our group chat. And it's like, it's a reason for that. They were the only ones that was mm-hmm. like, it was a mutual, it was what we talked about that time on the pod. Like it was <coughs> biotic. It was no parasitic. It was mm-hmm. no, I'm just here for what I got. Mm-hmm. It was like, how can mm-hmm. I help you? How can you help me? How, like, how can we, how can we get to a place where we're in a better space? How can I like, oh, you trying to do this? Well, let me feed into that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's that's really what it's about when you're making the choice to put you first. Like for one, you're cutting the grass, but for mm-hmm. two, you have to be prepared for that grieving process because you're gonna lose people along the way, no matter what it is you're trying to do for yourself. Like there's gonna be people, like there's people out there who are overweight and who start going to the gym and eating right, and they have other friends that was overweight with them, and now they don't got their pizza eating buddy no more, and they be resentful about that shit. Cause you weren't really with me to be my friend and you ain't really care about my health. You just was there cause you wanted somebody to be miserable with you. You wanted somebody mm-hmm. to be with your, what you got going on as opposed to like, like if anything to me, somebody in your situation, all right, we all, and, and we all coming from like, especially in Virginia, like everybody in Virginia, like unless you're from the Nova where you start getting into them really rich counties, Mm-hmm. Everybody got a similar background of like, even if you middle class, you kind of lower middle class. Like it's like you reg, you might be all right in your area, but you really regular if you look at it nationwide type shit. So it ain't nobody yeah. coming out like, oh, I'm silver spooning it. So to me, like if you if you got anybody that you cool with, that's like, oh, I'm about to do a thing that's gonna make me, for one, broad my horizon. It's gonna make me mentally healthy. It's gonna put me in a position where who knows I might get connections that can help you down the line all that and they sitting there looking at it like well damn why you doing that nigga what what is wrong with you if anything you should be excited and be like hey how you do that put me on put me on the game then then I can then, do it. Then I can do it for myself. Then I won't be miserable watching you do it, because then I'll be actually doing something for me. Don't hate on me. Learn from me. Opposing me using my energy to be sad about you, and I'm still in my position. Let me do something to elevate me too. So then I'm excited with you because I'm I'm rising too, and now I can still stay with you. You're not leaving me anywhere. We're going together. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> It's just a mentality, man. Like, I, I think some people is really put on this earth to be miserable and they really just want to complain. It's not that they, they want to be. They're just takers. They're looking for the next come up for them and anything that don't 
fit into them getting something, it's a problem. Be beware of people. Beware of people when you when you vent out your pain, especially if you're not a person that actually vent out or open up to people like that. When you vent out your pain, they either they're competing with your pain. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you just going through that? Well, I'm going through this, 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 and this. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The gaslighter. Beware of those people. Like sometimes it's hard to just listen to a, listen to a motherfucker. Let them vent real quick. Yeah, you like, gotta go tit for tat. It ain't gotta be a pissing contest over who hurting. <laughs> like, nigga, yeah. Let me just listen to the fact that you hurt and be there for you for a minute. Shit. Yeah. Why don't you just keep that razor away from your wrist for a second and and, and just like you know be a friend for a second. You know what I'm saying? But That's be it. yeah, be be aware of the people that be like gaslighting your pain, man. Because then they they ain't even trying to understand where you're coming from or whatever. Yeah, they'll look at they'll look at my situation like. You work from home, um, you got benefits and stuff like and, and insurance and stuff like that. But yeah, you're not hearing, you're not seeing that I'm having chest pains and breathing hard every single time. It's like an hour before I clock in. You, you're not, you're not seeing that. All right, like I said, I got, I get. I paid don't want to be, nice. be at the home that I'm working from. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I have to leave out of my house that I work from, drive around for a second, and then come back in to feel so it can feel like a home again. The <laughs> like, what I'm doing from home doesn't even align with what makes me happy. This ain't nothing that I really, this ain't what I'm trying to do for life. This is just to pay the bills. I'm good I at it. I want to do something that make me feel good. I'm good at it, but it doesn't benefit me. And it only benefits the company I'm working for Paris or whatever. But because you have a whole different life and you're going through so many other different things or whatever. And you, like, why I got to compete with your pain? I'm sorry you're going through that or whatever. So does, does that mean I don't have a right to feel what I'm actually feeling? Right. No. Nah. Beware of those people, man. Beware. Because yeah. it's all for them. I'm going to say another thing you got to be aware of and, and <clears throat> to be put yourself first. You do have to be aware of going and taking it too far. So I know mm-hmm. myself, I personally like there's been moments in my life, well, not moments, but like periods in my life, I should say, like, where like I'll be so focused on like trying to get myself to a good place that like I'll forget to still like check in and be there for the people around me like there's been times when like I've been so focused on like all right let me get my mental health right that like the wife might be going through something and I don't catch it because I'm so focused on me that it's blind you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. to put yourself first but you still gotta like if you do have those people that are when you done cut the grass they are still them ride or dies you still gotta be there for your people because like again even though like it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. So if you just completely get all the way on you and have no time for them, they're still losing something, but they're still going to be there trying to give to you because that's what the relationship was like. Y'all were giving to each other. So you don't want to make it to the way like you then become the parasite because you're so yeah. on you, if that makes sense. But like, yeah. like you're not necessarily asking for anything, but because the person is already used to giving, then they keep doing that role, but your role in the relationship shifts all of a sudden. Like, I think you still got to keep the same relationship roles. Like, you don't mm-hmm. have to start giving more all of a sudden because you get rich, or you don't have to start like um, necessarily forcing your new things on the person. But like, if y'all had a certain vibe that y'all you was used to, or like if y'all would check in on each other and call each other and you know text each other or joke around, like you still got to keep that same type yeah. of momentum with those people that are close to you, with those loved ones, the 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 spouses, the the kids, the friend, the close friends, those type of things, like, or you start to lose those relationships in lieu of this new whatever it is that you're doing for yourself. Nah, that's true. That's true. But 38 years. <laughs> 38 no. years. There's definitely time for you to get some uh 
some deposits as opposed to you continuing to have have withdrawals taken for sure. Yeah, I I I, I, I think I deserve it. <laughs> I think I deserve it. Right. Just up in you. Nigga, you you're a, you're a Capricorn. <laughs> so of course you deserve it. Nigga, we we mm. get the best. That's what we do. <laughs> we supposed to get the best. Indeed. We just got to realize it for ourselves. Yeah. We're very good at assessing everybody else's and how they can get their best, but we suck at sometime at like giving ourselves those same graces. Hey, Amen. Oh my God. And, and <laughs> oh my God. We'll sit there with somebody else. Hey, man, let me help you do this for you. Well, why you? Well, let me help you. And then we look up and we ain't did shit for us. Our shit falling apart, but we'd have got mm-hmm. everybody else's crib built. The- Perfect example of that. All right. I spent 10 years of me being single. And then within those 10 years, I held so many people's relationships. <laughs> hey, what? I've, I've held so many people's relationships. Single as shit. <laughs> like, nah, maybe she was, you know, she was thinking this way. You know what? You know, you're right. I didn't even think of it that way. Whatever. Like, look at me helping everybody else out. By myself. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Man. By myself. But it's important, man. Like double you gotta, be, you gotta be there for your people, but you also do gotta like do that maintenance, man. Like self-care. You have to. It's thoroughly important and it goes past just going to like get like going to the spa to get a massage or like getting, getting some cool, going out to dinner for yourself or taking yourself to movies. Like it gotta be some big shit sometime too. Like, yo, I've always wanted to live here for three years. This is making me miserable because I keep having this regret in the back of my mind. Well, go do it then. Find a way to go do it. It may not be able yeah, to- Yeah, that's the one tomorrow, thing. But like start mapping that plan out because the- the more you work toward the things that will truly fulfill you, not just make you joyful in the moment, like some old simple shit, but like some shit that's like going to make you fulfill where like you as a person grow from the experience and it's like, it's edifying to you. You know what I'm saying? You feel like you learn more about yourself at the end of So like, I, I think those moments are important. You have to take those leaps of faith and you have to take those career changes and those, Yo, I I think she the one or man, I've always wanted to go to Africa and live there and and serve in a mission or whatever. Whatever it is, it's like your thing that's like it's going to fulfill you. You have to push that because usually that thing that's going to fulfill you is somewhere aligned in your purpose, which is why it keep calling you and which is why you're uncomfortable and unhappy in every other. That's where that nagging sensation come from. It's like. I'm supposed to be over here. I keep putting this down r- round peg in a square hole and it won't fit right. Why won't it fit mm-hmm. right? Because it don't go there. You're supposed to be over here. So go on over there. Because once you're there, you're going to be happier. So the people around you are going to be happier, which means you're going to also probably be more fruitful in it because you're going to be doing things that are like, when you start doing things in your purpose, you, you're more passionate about it. So you're going to make more money. You're gonna make you're gonna make more connections, mm. find more resources from it. You're gonna find more things that enhance your life, which allows you to then have surplus to then enhance those people that you wanted to do things for anyway. But well, you were miserable because you couldn't. So yeah. now their lives are better because you made your own life better. So like it, it's a thing to that as long as you remember like your why and, and don't and don't start. I think the thing that also can happen too is like where you get people like a Putin or like Trumps or like these people that like once they get it, they lose their damn mind. It's like Mm -hmm. you can't get so stuck on yourself that once you get like you you get off of the I'm trying to make myself better to I'm trying to chase this thing. When you chase a thing, that's when shit starts going crazy because chasing things will lead you down roads where you can get addictions and you start fucking over people just chasing it forever and all that but when you're really chasing your purpose you're not there's no room to dick anybody over because it's not about you getting a leg up on nobody it's about you bettering you so as long as you're improving 
you're not worried. It's, it becomes less about competing with others and competing with yourself, which means you're not going to have no collateral damage of like, oh, I did bad business over here or I had to fuck this, mm -hmm. this homie over to get up this leg up or I had to undercut this person to do this. Like, it's like, no, nah, I was able to just focus on me and treat people right because I wasn't worried about what they were doing there. Their progress wasn't taken away from me because I was just focused on trying to get me better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's what people get to chasing that money and shit. Like they start off with like, oh, I wanna, I wanna do this business because I want to help the homeless. And then they start that business and it starts to become a successful thing. But then they start getting addicted to the fame of it, or they they get addicted to the money of it, or stay uh, grounded. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you gotta stay focused on the whatever that original mission was and why you was doing shit. Stay there. Let the other stuff come and use it as tools to continue or to grow what you're doing, but keep the main, keep that why the same, because that why is the true reason of why you're doing it, and that's the why that'll keep you from getting corrupted by the success of you following your purpose and, and, and hitting your passion goals. You know what I mean? Yeah.